A quick heads up before I get into this episode. Cleopatra no Maho has a lot of screen flashing. It's impossible for me to edit around it here. So if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, give this one a pass. Things are getting bad when I'm going, aren't I out of dog games yet? And the answer is no, there's three more left. I think Cleopatra no Maho is the worst dog game so far. To keep myself on schedule, I record about an hour of gameplay footage for every episode. In Cleopatra no Maho, I have about 5 minutes of actual progress in the game recorded, and 55 minutes of standing in one location, fighting the same enemies over and over again. This one's rough. The plot of the game is that Daisuke Kusano has been summoned to Egypt by his archaeologist father. His father thinks he's discovered the location of Cleopatra's secret treasure, but there was an evil spirit there that possessed him, and now Daisuke has to revive Cleopatra in order to save everyone. The interface for Cleopatra no Maho is pretty standard for adventure games on consoles at the time. You have the menu of commands, you select them by hitting the A button, and if the menu is too long to be shown there, you can press the B button. You can't back out of a command after you enter it, so you'll want to be cautious about that. Some commands also don't appear until you take other actions, like you have to look at the cat before you can pet it. Moving around is trickier than it should be, because after you select the move command, you then have to hit B to cycle through directions that you want to move. And even though you have a first-person perspective of the area, you're always facing the same direction no matter which way you go. Except at one location where you've rotated to face 90 degrees away from what you normally do. Basically, if you turn left or right, then you're still facing the same direction, unless you go to one shop, in which case you've turned to face it. You arrive in Egypt with nothing except 200 gold, which of course is the standard currency in Egypt, and the first thing you have to do is buy a weapon, because as you're wandering the streets of Cairo, you'll be accosted by various ethnic stereotypes. When this happens, you can choose to fight, use an item, or run away. And if you don't have a weapon, you can't do any damage to them at all. So step one is to buy a weapon, and then start grinding. There is no armor in the game. The only thing you can do is upgrade your weapon. Instead, your defense is solely handled by your hit points. Those start at 50, and increase dramatically every time you level up. When you do get enough experience to level up, it doesn't happen automatically. You have to go to the inn and sleep. Staying at the inn costs 50 gold. And the enemies that you face in the streets of Cairo drop an average of 15 gold. Also in combat, they do about an average of 15 damage to you. So when you start out, you have to get extremely lucky to not be losing money as you do that initial grind. Once you reach level 2 and have doubled your health, then you might be able to live long enough to get enough cash to buy some required items. There's a shop that sells rice cakes that you use to recover health. Those cost 100 gold each. And a shop with goods that will be used in the adventure game portion, which also cost several hundred each. Getting a better weapon is way out of your reach because that's 2,000 gold. So the way you have to do this is just stand in front of the inn, interact with something, I recommend petting the cat, because every time you choose a menu command, it could trigger an attack. When you get past the level up threshold, save your game, and then keep going until you're able to buy the equipment that you need to continue the quest. Once you've done all that, you get an additional menu command that lets you travel to other locations, like the Sphinx, where you quickly spot a secret passage in the front of it that somehow no one has noticed for thousands of years. Then it's just a matter of picking up anything that's not nailed down, and a few screens later you'll reach a dungeon. And here you can start the grind all over again, assuming you don't get instantly killed by the much stronger monsters that are wandering the halls. Save early, save often. I suspect that the reason they put in this massive grind is because without it, Cleopatra no Maho would be extremely short. Like, 20 to 30 minutes short. And not 20 or 30 minutes for somebody who knew the game's plot, 20 to 30 minutes for somebody playing the first time. 
The RPG grind doesn't add anything to the game, though. It just drags everything out and makes it a lot more boring. Now, despite all of that, Cleopatra no Maho's reception in Japan seems to have been fairly positive. Or at least I found many people talking about how much they loved it as kids. Maybe it gets better after you've grinded for three hours. I myself don't see a whole lot worth playing here. What little of the adventure game I could play didn't have anything interesting, and the RPG portions were much worse. And also, the vast majority of the game. Cleopatra no Maho was just miserable to play for me. And I don't see anything here really worthwhile.